so for today, what I want to do is I am just going to do um, a one-page uh, piece today, and I am going to do it just on I mean, this, this page right here, and no particular reason why. I just thought it would be fun to do it. Um, I've already gessoed it. It's ready to go. And what I'm going to do today is um, let me show you what I got going. I'm getting too big of a pot. Okay, so I'm going to do just one page. And I am trying to use some of the things that I have in my, um, in my, uh, my craft room. I will never live long enough to use it all. I bought these, and it's really beautiful, beautiful, bright colors um, quite a long time ago. I'm pretty sure I got it at Tuesday morning and 180 sheets. But honestly, I don't really do that much with anything um, this bright of colors very often. Um, so I thought, well, okay, so maybe I try and do something with that. And I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what, what I do. I am kind of up in the air about what I want to do with it. But I thought that we could hang out today and just kind of play with doing stuff like this. Because I know everyone has a stash of paper that you, um, you have that you haven't used. Anyway. This is not heavy cardstock, and I just wanted to say that. I mean, you could use heavy cardstock, but, you know, you're adding to paper that's already there. Um, so, you know, I don't know how heavy you would want it to be. But I just picked out some um, different prints. And when I say solid, I mean, like, you know, like just the polka dot green and stuff like that. And I just got some different pages, and I don't know, just different things I didn't want them to necessarily go together because I'm not kind of going for that but just some different colors that I could put together and yeah I know they don't really they don't really make any sense but they will um so anyway I thought I would use those okay um, the other thing that I want to use is I have all kinds of scraps, just like everyone does, of um, different types of book page and music paper and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so um, I wanted to maybe use some of that uh, in this. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use, I have all these punches. Um, different kinds of punches, um, floral punches, round punches, heart punches. Um, this is really made to, for, uh, to make a brad, which I've never used this. Not for that anyway. I've got heart punches. I've got different size circle punches. Anyway, what I'm going to be doing is making flowers with them. So that is what I thought I would do. And so what I wanted to do first is put these on here, but you'll see what I'm going to do. Um, what I was trying to figure out is what color I wanted to put on my background. So I kind of was looking around, and I think the easiest way for me to put color on there is going to be using my Distress, ox distress oxide sprays and I really only want just a few colors on there because you're all, it's only going to be in the background you're not going to really see it so I thought I would use that so anyway what I'm going to do where did my little thing go oh here it is I have these little um, and I sh showed you guys these before I buy these at the dollar store these are just little um, plastic um, cutting mats and I love using these I cut them in half and use them as a glue thing I use them all kinds of ways so anyway what I'm going to do is I am probably let's see what did I do with my little thingy here, oh, here. 
I don't really want to spray. I just kind of want to spray it in here and then kind of put it on here. Um, just because it is kind of messy. So I'm going to take, what color is this? This is Salty Ocean. And I'm going to put a little Salty Ocean in here. I'll just spray it on here in case it goes anywhere. So that gives me a little salty ocean in there. And then I'm taking, what color is this? Faded jeans. And I'm going to put that in another one. It's a little darker. Okay, so now I have those two colors in there. And I can certainly use, I have a little salty ocean here of the, um, of the distress oxide. So. All right, so let me get my brush. Where did it go? Okay, so I am going to just take this and kind of just, I just want it on here. I don't really care. Well, that's not going to be nearly enough, is it? Um, how it goes on there or that it mixes, it's not going to really matter to me. Definitely going to need more than that. Okay, well, I think I'll just spray it on. I'm trying to get the inside of this page right here. Although you'll never see it, but just to make it kind of blend better. Okay, I'll use the rest of that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and spray. I just didn't want it to get on the other side. And I'm going to take that, just kind of. I just want a blue background underneath this, and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to see very, very little of it some of this other on there now you could use just plain old watercolors whatever you want to use this is just to get some color down on my background and this dries fairly quickly too that's part of the reason I wanted to do it I was thinking about just using acrylic but I thought nah, this will dry a lot quicker so that's the main reason I used it just for the fact that it dries quick. Okay. So I'm just doing this here just so it blends. And I'm not doing the other page today. This is just going to be a one page thing. Because um, they're pretty big pages. But okay, So that's good enough. That's all I need. I just need a background on there. Put this in the water. Okay, so that is going to dry rather quick. I don't think I'll need the other blue for a while. Put that over here. Get it out of the way. So, it will be dry very quickly. And while it's drying, let me put this aside. I have my little drying spot over here. I'm going to let that dry. And we are going to do the fun part. Well, it's all fun. That's the whole point. Um, this is my different papers that I picked out. I don't know how many of these I'm going to use, but I'm going to go ahead and cut out more than I need. And the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these over. Okay. And I'm going to cut it out, you know, larger than I need. Let me get a pen. I'm just, this is ran, doesn't matter what color. And I am going to just go ahead and come up with a pattern. And they don't definitely do not have to meet they don't have to be the same in fact it's better if they don't okay you don't want them the same and don't worry at some point this will make sense really want that a little bit more. And I know all my papers are not lined up together, but, and I may not necessarily even cut them like that. Now what I'm going to do
Got a couple of paper clips here. Yeah, like, see, I want that smoother. So I'm going to just take my paper clips and try and keep these together with those. I only have two. I could put more on there, but I think that'll be enough. Okay, so then I'm just going to take some scissors. And I can already tell this paper clip's in the way. I'm going to move it. Okay. And I am just going to go through. And I have way too many pieces in here, but that's okay. Could have done it with a lot less. And my pattern doesn't really matter because it'll work anyway. This is just to kind of give me an idea. And I did put too many pieces in there. I didn't count them. But... I know I put too many. It'll still work, but it would be easier with less pieces. And this one, I don't like how I cut it, so I'm going to just kind of go over what I did and just kind of cut it the way I want it. And I'm going to keep these in order, and you'll see why. all right anyway where'd my oh i cut off my paper clip that didn't help that didn't help i was wondering why it was coming apart so bad okay again don't do as many as i did because i just got carried away picking out paper okay all right there and then this is the last one okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to take our paper here that's already dry and that's why i use the oxide sprays and these are in order and i am just going to pick a paper to start on the bottom and i'll just might as well just do that one I'm going to go ahead and use my matte gel. You can use any kind of white glue um, that you have. So I'm just going to put that at the bottom. No particular reason. And it is going to get some of that blue. It's going to reactivate it, so you're going to get some blue on there. And, I mean, I could go up here and then... Now I'm going to go ahead and leave that here. I'm going right to the spiral part. So I've got it right at the bottom. And I put, I'm not going to cut these until later. Okay, so that was my first stack. I probably should have left that. That way I can tell which one's first. So that's number one. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down here. And then I'm going to crisscross them so I can tell what's what. Then I'm going to go to my stack number two, but I'm not going to pick that first one. I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a floral. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And see, that'll fit right in there because this is my second stack. I'm going to crisscross these so that I know, you know, that they're different stacks. So put these over here. So I'm taking my, and I'm going to leave a gap in these. Um, that's why I did the color, okay, is I want to have a gap, and I just decide what what size gap you want, okay. And you could have left it white, it would have been fine. I just, for some reason, decided I wanted blue, and it's mainly because there isn't a lot of blue in there. It's contrasting, so. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm following the curve, see that it matches, and I'm going to leave a gap. That's probably too big a gap. I probably want to keep a gap, you know, similar. It doesn't have to be perfectly the same, but you want to kind of, that's kind of the point, is to put that in there. And I think it's because I put it on there crooked. So there is my gap, and it's similar. It's not exactly the same, but that's good enough. And now I'm going to take my stack number three, and I'm going to pick something from that. 
and I'm going to do this. It's not really a solid, but it has a lot of solid in it, so I'll just do that. Put that on there. up a little bit yeah that's too big a gap there yeah I like that better so that's my next one now I'm going to take my next stack and I really want a really florally floral not florally uh, let me see what do I want something I already used that one so I think I'm going to use that one. I think that would work good. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm only um, crisscrossing them. I'm not going to use them later, but in case I want to use them again, I kind of want to number my stack so I know what order they're in so I can use them again on another page. I'm not sure I will, but you never know. Or you could use them on a tag. You could you do anything. But you can see by keeping them in order that you've come up with this kind of a pattern here. And you could make this as small as you want. If you want to do like a mosaic type thing, you could do that. Okay, so. All right, what color do I want to put? I've got that on the bottom. Maybe some green. Could I do green? Oh, I could do that one. Would that look good? Or do I want another color? I only have enough for a few more um, patterns. So I have to be picky about what I'm doing. Okay, I think I'll do that. I'll do that. on and I don't really care that my um, that my lines are exactly you know the same in between but I want them similar okay so what am I going to put at the top should I put that one I think I do want another floral pattern, but I think that would be cool. Maybe that. Let's see. Oh, that is the wrong one. It goes that way. Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. So I ended up with one extra, but that's okay. And it doesn't matter that it's going off the top because we can definitely, um, we can definitely fix that later. As I said, I'm keeping these in order. You can always figure it out later, but it just makes it easier. All right, so let me put this last piece on. Okay. And we'll see how that turns out. And I'm just doing the same thing. It is going to overlap. I mean, it's going to go over the top, but I will cut that later. Okay, and I think the blue is a good choice because it because we don't really have much of that color or any really of it in there. It does make it pop a little, so that's good. And I'm sticking with the bright, just mainly because I don't ever get to use it, it seems like. And I'm going to go over this with my matte medium you could just use plain old white glue I using the matte medium I would probably use white glue except I do know it dries a little faster it is a lot more expensive but when I'm doing a video you know I'm trying to cut my drying time okay so I um, went ahead and dried all of this and it's ready to work with and I think it turned out kind of cute and what I have done 
because I didn't think you guys would want to watch me do this, is I went ahead and I cut out all kinds of shapes out of all of these different papers. And the one thing that I was looking for is different fonts, different colors of um, paper. You know, like I have some very vintage um, uh, dictionary page, but then I've got some other vintage pages that have like a different print. Okay, and I just took my shapes and cut out different shapes, not really any particular rhyme or reason to it. Um, and I cut out way more than I needed because honestly, I don't, you know, I don't know how much I'm going to use. So, and I figure I can always use it later, right? For something. And then, let's see, I have some flower shapes. So I went ahead and cut out a few of those. I have to watch too. Some of my papers are really brittle, so they don't work that good, but so I have to kind of be careful which ones I use them on. Okay. But anyway, you get the idea. So I just did that. Um, you know, just to kind of give me a variety to work with. And now I am going to make flowers out of them on here. And this isn't super artsy. It's just kind of, you know, fun, really. So I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some and decide. Probably put my larger ones in the middle. So these are two different shapes that I have. So I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe. Maybe. We shall see. That would be cool. Do I go that side or do I go this side? Maybe, or maybe I do. Oh, that's the same as that one. So I'm trying to get contrasting um, colors in here and move them all around. So, you know, and, and, and contrasting shapes, not just, you know, colors. So here's my hearts that I had. So I could make like a little flower out of that. Right? Maybe. I don't know. Three petals, four petals. What do you guys think? I could do that, I think. Right there. I'm doing my bigger ones first. Um, I could put that over there. Have a different shape, maybe. Put that over there, or maybe that, because I don't have that dictionary page. And maybe that over there, but then that's the same as that one. Do I want to put that there? And then maybe. I'm trying not to put like ones together so that it looks a little bit more varied. I could put one more. Or I could trade these out and not put them all the same. I have another one like that, let me see. So I'm just really going around and looking at my different um, options here just to kind of play with it, just decide, you know. I do have more music paper somewhere. No, I don't want to do that exactly the same. So here's some music paper over here. Maybe I put dictionary page on that. No. Or maybe I put this. Um, here's my big circle. Could put that over there. Need something kind of big over here. Could maybe move my heart over there. And then do I have a big flower? I think I do. Can put that over here. But then that's the same as over there. 
Anyway, you guys get the idea. I'm not trying to... I wonder if that would go there. If I should do that. And then what could I put in the middle? Hmm. Oh, I have another little flower. I haven't used that yet. Could put that there. Hmm. Okay, I think that works. So after I get my flowers kind of where I want them, I don't know, I just kind of feel like this one is in the wrong spot. And I'm trying to just vary these a little bit, but oh, see, that's what I, some of my pages are super brittle, so they're gonna break. I have to be careful with them. Maybe put that right there, and then put that one right there. Okay, that looks a little better. Looks a little better. Now, then I have two music pages close to each other. So what if I do that? But you can't really see it. Huh. I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. That's enough of a different variance that you get the idea. I just wanted to even out the big pieces a little bit. Move that up there. Okay, let's see. So maybe we should go like that and that. Okay, that works. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these down. And then we're going to add stems. So that is pretty much it, guys. Um, that is the extent of this little exercise. I'm just going to make sure it's all glued down. And really, I just wanted the contrast of using these pages, you know. Against the really bright colors. And that is all I wanted to do wanted to play with things I don't normally get to do just because I never really use these kind of colors very often so let's do that put that in there have to be careful with these because they really do fall apart easy. They're super old, some of them, so I can't handle them too much. Yeah, that's probably good enough for that. Okay. And the really fun thing about this is that I'm using stuff. These are just scrap pieces of paper. This is stuff that I probably am never going to use. So it allows me an opportunity to use some of that stuff. And I bought it, I'm sure, because I liked it. It's just not what I'm using right now. Okay. So again, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Make sure it's got plenty of glue on it and 
Well, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do the next part and then dry it off. Okay, so the next part is really, I'm just going to be putting stems on this, guys. And I'm using twine. I don't want the bigger part up there. Now, this stuff is really kind of thick. So, I think what I'm going to do is use my... Um, my uh, three-in-one glue because I think it will stick better with that. Let's see if I can get it. I may not be able to use this because it doesn't seem to be wanting to um, move very well. I may have to use the thinner stuff. And I know this is longer than I need it, but I'm going to cut it later. I guess I'm just going to have to let it go whatever way it wants to. And I'm not going to be able to make it go the way I want it to. Okay. Well, it's still not staying very good. Okay. Got to get all that extra glue off. Let me get a white. Cut that off on the bottom. Okay. Let me get another I was going to try and use different ones, but I don't know if that's going to work because, let's see if this will work. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. <coughs> and these are just different types of yarn, I mean twine and things that I already have. So I just thought I would cut off a few pieces and then see how that goes. <coughs> just to add different texture, but let me see. I'm trying to do maybe this one. I mean, you could draw them on or do whatever you want to do. I just kind of thought this would be kind of fun to do this. And I wanted to stay with the brown. You know. Got way too much on there. Yeah, that's a little bit more pliable. Now, while this is drying, what I'm going to do, you guessed it, I'm going to make some leaves. And I think I'm going to do it with some of the little pieces that I have up here. And some of the paper I have over here. So, let's see here. What I thought about doing is if I took, like some of these I could make some leaves out of that right and then I could take these 
and I could cut them up. Got too much glue right there, but that's okay. Only for my consumption. Let's see if I can make little leaves out of that. Right. So then those would go there. Okay, I went ahead and finished all this and I decided that it needed a few more flowers. So I added three of them here down lower because it was just like nothing going on down here. And then I decided to go around each of the flowers just kind of with my find. This is, I get this at the dollar store, this pen. It's just, I love it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, when it, you, it's not perfect and you make kind of scratchy lines I think it kind of looks even better and all I'm doing is going around this just so that it pops out a little bit and oops that's okay if you make a mistake because it won't I promise you you just kind of go back around it and it'll work of course, I'm doing it fast. You guys take your time. But it's kind of fun. And by doing that, again, everything just kind of pops out a little bit more. You want to just, I'm just going around the edges. You can do it a couple of times if you want. Um, you know, sometimes a scratchy line looks better than a straight line, I think. Um. 
So just do that around the whole thing. And you know, you can do any design you want. I, I just was like um, thinking this would be kind of fun to use some of these papers that I haven't used in a really long time that I probably will never use. And I'm, that's kind of some of the things I'm going to try and incorporate in my journal um, are things that I'm probably not going to use otherwise, you know. Um, like I seriously doubt that I would use these papers. And I did this kind of messy. It's not all that perfect, but the point is, is that I'm trying out different things and different techniques. So anyway, that's the finished page. Um, just to give you an idea of something that you can do where you can add those pieces together. Um, I think it'd be really cool to do something like that, to do like a tile effect. Here we go, guys. We'll have something fun next time. Um, who knows what it'll be? I don't know, usually until the day of or the day before. All right, take care.